Hello, fans, and welcome to the Pro Wrestling Report. It is Damian Nelson sitting alongside the man they call Meathead. We are here in Detroit, Michigan for WrestleMania 23 weekend festivities. Sure, it where's all, all the big girls tonight? Man. With the Hall of Fame induction ceremony at the Fox Theater in, uh, not Chicago, but Detroit, Michigan. Meet where up. are you and where am I? There was about a two-hour ceremony, an yeah. hour of which broadcast on the USA Network. Right. We saw greats inducted, the show hosted by Todd Grisham after an introduction by Mean Gene Oakland, which I don't believe the fans at home saw Mean Gene. But let's talk about what happened off-air first. Sure. And it all kicked off with the induction of the Wild Samoans. Yeah, outstanding. You know, the Wild Samoans are uh, very soft-spoken. and uh, the Are they hard-hitting? <sighs> the Wild Samoans very soft-spoken. And, you know, it's kind of funny to listen to them talk. I, I feel bad for the Wild Samoans, though, because the only times they really cheered is when they heard the name Maya Villa. Peter Maivia, the High Chief, Peter Maivia, or Rocky Johnson. Exactly, related to The Rock, The Rock uh, Samoan. What was interesting, though, Meathead, is the first time we saw publicly announced that Yokozuna was not Japanese, which was known, of course, in, in, in the inner circles that, that did sure. you play in. Uh, the, the gimmick was, obviously, that Yokozuna came from the Far East, and he was managed by Mr. Fuji, and, you know, did his whole thing. And James E. Cornette, let's not forget. Yeah, correct. The greatest manager of all time correct. was also involved with that. But correct. Wild Samoans, the first to be inducted, inducted by their sons, one of which, I believe, was... It looked like Rosie. Could have been. We uh, did he not... Was a super he, he was a superhero in training at one point. Training must not have gone so well for that individual. Three minutes and they were out of here. Which you said, you're pretty, pretty clever, pretty quick on your feet Thank there. You. Thank you. Uh, from there, we go on to the next inductee in the Hall of Fame, off-screen or off-air, if you will, which was Nick Bockwinkle. Correct. Nick Bockwinkle, a man we've had in studio a couple of times with a pro wrestling reporter, a man we've had Frank conduct interviews with, a man who on this very page, by you can see. Another man that's been on this very program. Bobby the Brain well. Heenan, indeed, inducting Nick Bockwinkle into the Hall of Fame. That interview is right here on the WrestleMania 23 page as well. Make sure you check it out, folks. Frank Costantino spending some time with Nick Bockwinkle. But Nick Bockwinkle comes out, and after being prefaced by Bobby Heenan, who says Bockwinkle might go till 4 a.m., he actually gave what might have been the shortest acceptance speech of the night. Yeah, unbelievably so. I think that he might have been told that his time was going to be short, so he cut it short, he made it sweet, but Bockwinkle um, put over the business. He did, and it was short and sweet and effective, uh, of course, in that induction by Nick Bockwinkle. It was good to see him finally get his due, uh, Mr. Bockwinkle, in that um, in the induction ceremony tonight. Absolutely. Absolutely. One thing about the ceremony, Meathead, uh, lots of fans, over 5,000 fans in the absolutely gorgeous Fox oh. Theater in, in Georgia. I'm I had sorry, a semi. In Detroit here. I had a semi the whole time. I mean, literally, I was half-masked. Beautiful time. building and a uh, very great venue, but a lot of fan interaction, if you will. We'll talk more about that as we get to the end of the wrap-out. Wrap up, if you will. Oh my God, what are you doing now? I think, uh, I think, well, you know, I'm excited. It's WrestleMania. <laughs> Frank says start hot. You need to start hot, not stumble hot. Let's go. Nick Bockwinkle inducted, the Wild Samoans inducted. From there, Meathead, we go to Mr. Fuji, son. Mr. Fuji, who is inducted by Don the Rock Morocco, the original Rock, if you will, comes out and gives a very jovial speech about Mr. Fuji, son. A fellow Hall of Famer. Exactly. Fuji comes out, uh, not getting around so well lately, is Mr. Fuji. Also, I think the reason is he ain't got no mustache no more. Uh, it fell off. The man's 97. I mean, it's, you know, Propecia doesn't work on the face. Propecia. Um, <laughs> Mr. Fuji gave an acceptance speech that uh, might have been about as long as Nick Bockwinkel's. But again, short was sweet and said what he needed to say. And also, you couldn't understand half of it. Exactly. Fuji. I, I, I apologize. I mean, if you see this video, but... Mr. Fuji, I couldn't understand the thing you were saying. And actually, when we uh, go back real quick to the Wild Samoans, uh, they opened their speech, their uh, induction speech, in Samoan as well. They did. That is all the off-air inductions, if you will. From there, we go live, if you will, on the USA Network, and it opens up as Stone Cold Steve Austin, who inducts the greatest play-by-play -play man in the history of the business, good old J.R. Jim Ross, the first inductee into the Hall of Fame on the live broadcast. J.R. gave... The longest acceptance speech of the night, not as long as Sensational Sherry or Bret Hart in 2006, but Bret Hart, I'm sorry, Jim Ross, very emotional at the beginning of the induction, and the respect meet had shown to him by the fans in the Fox Theater was amazing. The respect is fine, but you know what, there was a different feel in the arena. You know, I 
we're wrestling fans. Damon's a wrestling fan. I'm a wrestling fan. You're a wrestling fan for watching this. But good God almighty, man, you know, there's a time when you just sit down and shut up and listen. I understand. I used to be that guy that would wait for the perfect silent moment and yell some stupid, idiotic... Meat-heady kind of remark. Meat-head-ish oh. type remark. Um, but again, more on that later. And good old JR giving a, given a very fitting induction by Stone Cold Steve Austin, who admitted and said that he told JR that he had love for him. But of course... It's like a man given, crush. Well, what, what happened, and we saw this really take shape during the JR induction, was a lot of inner information, if you will. Stone Cold giving more detail about his departure from WWE when Which he was done we, with the business and how he remember, got back in very clearly. and who got him back in and the circumstances that allowed him to be where he is today in the business did Stone Cold Steve Austin and Jim Ross come out very emotional, gave a very thinning acceptance speech and took advantage of all the time he had. Also stating so. that he is unofficially or officially in his eyes the first ever wrestling fan that was not a worker in the ring to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Yes, indeed. Um, good old JR, congratulations on being in the 2007 WWE Hall of Fame. From there we go to William Shatner, Meathead. Why? Who is inducting good old uh, Jerry the King Lawler and in again, the Hall of Fame. We talk about the fans and we're talking more about it as we get through the night. They crapped all over his speech. Yeah. Well, it didn't help that he was reading it all from a piece of paper. I understand Which gave some disgen disingenuity? Disingenuous. Oh, there we go. Good. Oh, my good. God. I am correcting you. <laughs> it happened once. And it, was, uh, it was on March 31st, 2007 when that happened. Uh, Jerry Lawler comes out and gives a comedic approach to his acceptance. Of but still how off of the production. Shatner roast, if you will. Exactly. And uh, gives a little bit of histrionics to why him and uh, Bill Shatner were uh, our friends. Of course, talks about Andy Kaufman, talks about why he recognizes that most of you fans only know Jerry Lawler from his 10 years or so he's been in the WWE. But when you really look at the career of Jerry the King Lawler from his Memphis days in the USWA all the way up through Mid-South. Even and, into his heel wrestling career that he had in the WWE. Lots of homage paid to Bret Hart. Remember, when Jerry Lawler first came into WWE, he had that program with Bret Hart. He was and also his family. Exactly. And I still remember the line about uh, how Helen got her tongue stuck in a toaster. Oh, boy. Trying to make French toast. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Lawler inducted into the Hall of Fame. From there, folks, we go to an emotional induction, which is Mr. Perfect. A posthumous induction, if you will. His, uh, I'll let it go because it was correct. His sons, Cody, who is uh, in OVW right now, working his way up to the WWE roster, and the old gold dust, Dustin Runnels. Uh, are we talking about perfect? Or are we talking I'm sorry. About Dustin? I skipped over. Oh I'm, my God. I'm, I'm sorry. Why spoke on this very I skipped. Tape. Well, We're talking about tease. It was a tease. Posthumous uh, induction of Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, brought, Wade in by, Box. Uh, brought in by Wade Box. Another emotional individual, a very close personal friend to Kurt Henning. Absolutely. Uh, Wade Box uh, being a baseball player, Kurt Henning having a baseball scholarship and decided against going into playing baseball, wanted to go do a little wrestling, just like his big papa. But uh, coming up to the podium was his wife, his son, his daughter, who they, they look just like. had two like sons, him. two daughters. They, they look just like him. And what made like it even him. more uh, recognizable was the fact that the eldest son was wearing one of Kurt's old jackets, which was Absolutely. Um, a, very, a very respectful thing to do. But what me and I speculated on during the ceremony was, and this is going to sound more harsh than it is, Granted, Mr. Perfect was a great athlete, was at one time one of my favorite wrestlers, but obviously he has passed. And uh, last year we saw Eddie Guerrero get inducted into the Hall of Fame in what was nothing more than, in my opinion, an emotional play. Not that he didn't deserve to be in it, it a, but look no, at... It was a play to get Ray up higher. That's what it was. And look at, um, you know, you've got an Owen Hart who has still not been inducted into the Hall of Fame, but a lot of homage paid to uh, Kurt Henning, who has passed. And not that he wasn't deserving again, but you wonder at times how much the situation may be taken advantage or of. Or the timing of the reaction of the fans. Wrestling fans are very emotional. While they may not realize it or admit it, they're very emotional. And Mr. Perfect getting a rousing ovation for being inducted into in, the Hall emotionally of Emotionally invested mm -hmm. in their guys. And uh, you know, the, the question is: is, is if he was, if he was still alive, would it have been such an impactful moment? Absolutely not. He would have been an open card. From there, Dusty Rhodes, in his belly welly, uh, is inducted into the Hall of Fame, as I said before, his son Cody, who wrestles for OVW, and the old Gold Dust Dustin Reynolds, 
do the induction of Dusty, who stole the show and didn't. You can't. I, I don't know if you could say that this is the main event, steal the show. Didn't do as much of an acceptance speech as much of as he did a recognition of all of the other legends who are not yet in the Hall of Fame, and some that aren't, including Harley Race, and that were uh, in the uh, world. Rick Flair is in the Rick Hall Flair, Arn Anderson, Gerald Briscoe, uh, Harley Race, Shawn Michaels, Triple H actually giving a great deal of respect to Triple H and saying that Triple H wants to be on the card, deserves to be on the card for WrestleMania, WrestleMania will be lacking without him, and then talks about some of the younger guys, Meathead, which was a bit of a theme of the night, talks about some of the younger guys who are out there who may not deserve to be on the card, yet are. Maybe that was Dusty Rhodes that wrote Ric Flair's promo to Carlito. Could have been, but you saw JR do it. You saw the Wild Samoans do it. Who also had to point out uh, uh, Umaga's mama. Jerry Lawler did it. Jim Ross did it, as I said. And Dusty Rhodes did it. A lot of talk about these younger guys and their perceived lack of passion or commitment to professional wrestling. Dusty Rhodes goes for probably about 10, 15 minutes and really felt it, really accepted well, it. Well, I swear, really? I, I told you while we were sitting there, I swear that I needed to go hurry up and get my ham and rolls because I was at Sermon the whole time. Yes, Dusty, but a great speech and a great acceptance until the 2007 WWE Hall of Fame. Yeah, I agree. The show ends at that point, folks. A couple of observations from the show. Again, the Fox Theater, an amazing facility. Um, the jewel of Detroit so far because this city, <laughs> oh, 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 Jesus, this city is you run guys down. that are watching us from the Michigan area, and you know who else uh, we have forgotten? Uh, again, I'm going to correct you. Uh, Rob Van Dam and Sabu coming out to give an acceptance speech for the original Sheik. Mm -hmm. And by the way, from Detroit. By the way, this is something that has well, been bugging me. Detroit, this is something that has been bugging me about WWE forever. And Rob Van Dam brought it up at the original One Night Stand. You know what's wrong with WWE and what they do with Rob? Rob can talk. Rob can talk well. Now, obviously, he may uh, resonate with me a little bit more because he's a stoner, and we talk the same. But, yeah. But Rob can talk. And, you know, when they put the Sheik in there, uh, the Sheik was hardcore before hardcore was hardcore. So Rob, you know, and Sheik, or uh, Sabu, excuse me, uh, did, did the Sheik justice. I mean, he, all the years that he put in there. But let me just say... His wife again, accepting the award on his behalf. Exactly. Let me just say once again, uh, Detroit. For those of you that are watching us from the city of Detroit or the Detroit area, and we love you. Don't get us wrong. But good God almighty, you people are ugly. Well, now, um, we spent a little time at the MGM Grand Casino. Oh, my God. Going to be spending a bit of time in Canada tomorrow before the WrestleMania festivities begin. Um, this city, <laughs> I want to come back. If you're in Canada and I get lost there, I want to come home. I really this, uh, this city, uh, um, wow. Uh, but anyways, downtown Detroit, the only thing that's got going for it right now is the Fox Theater. Beautiful piece of historic uh, landmark. New Comerica, new uh, Ford Field, and that's about it. Yeah, that about sums it up, folks. But the fans tonight, very passionate. outspoken passionate, yeah. yet you still had those asshole fans, and if you're watching, you are, um, who are there nothing more than to have themselves heard on TV or seen on TV, and at the worst times, Meathead, would interject, you know, and hey, we love you, Dusty, or you're great, but it wasn't for the person they were speaking to. Yeah. It was simply for their own self-gratification. That, folks, is, is fairly annoying, um, and this night... While I understand many wrestling fans may not understand the purpose of it, is to honor those who are being inducted and to give them the respectful time to do I'm so. Also, and accept. I'm also not going to say that I am a uh, Brooks Brothers type of person, okay? But on the ticket, it did say business attire preferred. It didn't say guaranteed that it was going to get you kicked out. But when you come in and you wrestle in t shirt and you look like a scrub from the hills, just saying. Well, we, maybe we should have wrestling fan beautification lessons here on the show. No, because I'm not one to talk about it. Well, look at you. Folks, that's the 2007 WWE Hall of Fame induction ceremony. As you see, me and I are here in Detroit, Michigan. We're getting ready to head down to the hotel bar. Yeah, because there was a couple backstage Bettys in the audience tonight. And then tomorrow we will be bringing you another wrap-up from WrestleMania 23. Just after the show, Meathead, it's going to be a great show. Three big main events. Battle of the Billionaires, 
Undertaker versus Batista, and John Cena. I got to note real quick. Very good. Good. You, you very know good. what Norm I'm talking about. The crowd hates Batista. Hated him. Hates Cena. But you know what? Cena eating it up. Cena feeds. Batista does not feed. Yeah. And this is the first time we've heard this course of just overwhelming boos for Batista. And many a fan was saying the word overrated. We've been saying it for weeks, months, that Batista is a great presence. Is he world champion yeah, material? No. Undertaker walking out of WrestleMania with that gold, there's no doubt. There's John no Cena doubt. walking out of WrestleMania with that gold, in this man's opinion, no doubt. Battle of the Billionaires, obvious finish to that one, but it's going to be a fun match nonetheless. But see exactly what and happened by the way, the yeah. update right here on PWRShow.com. By the way, after obvious finish to Money in the Bank as well. This pretty haircut is still going to stay. You are, uh, Frank's going to dress like a cock. And you're going to be bald. Love it. Thank you for tuning in, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you tomorrow right here on PWRShow.com.